Welcome to the STU Summit in Korea. Today we have um, Klaus Skåne. Um, Skåne. Skåne, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's the founder of DigiShare. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here for the interview today. Um, before we dive into the question, could you please briefly um, give us your self-introduction? Yes, uh, my name is uh, Klaus. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of uh, DigiShare. I have a background as a researcher, a PhD in computer science, oh. and I've been starting several companies over the years. Wow. Started this company five years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, I like being on the business side. I like the blockchain uh, vision and uh, what we're doing in the space. Excellent. So you started in Denmark. I started in Denmark. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm based in Denmark. I've been there whole, whole my life. Uh, yeah. But uh, the company is a U.S. company, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Um, then, can you provide a br um, brief overview of your company as well in this STO yes. industry? Yes. So, DTCS is one of the leaders in the provision of white-label technology, mm -hmm. allowing companies to conduct tokenization, yeah. uh, the, the tokenization process. So we basically provide a system that allows uh, anyone to tokenize their own assets, uh, get full control over the process. Any and types sort of, of uh, assets? Any type oh. of asset, yeah. Okay. So most of our clients are in the real estate domain. Mm -hmm. so they tokenize real estate properties, but we also have clients tokenizing energy, uh, investment oh, funds, company equity, and so on. Mm -hmm. mm, I see. Then how do you see STOs impacting traditional finance and investment? We see uh, tokenization potentially longer term becoming a new infrastructure for the financial yeah. services space. Mm -hmm. uh, it will fade into the background and just become the way that things are done. I think this is the way the big financial services firms view it, mm -hmm. the big banks, the exchanges and so on that are following uh, modern uh, times, they see it this way and it's also the way that it's sort of uh, projected and predicted mm -hmm. by the, the big uh, industry yeah. uh, firms. Um, so we, we view it really as a future infrastructure for the financial services space. It's just more efficient, more precise, True. more secure, more yeah. transparent. It's a better technology. Mm, true. Then how do you see the Korean market influencing or being influenced by the global STO landscape? We see over the last uh, year or so, we've seen some changes in the market globally, I would say, where mm. you, the US used to be the leader in this yeah. space. Uh, they have sort of dropped a little bit behind. The SEC has clamped down on oh, crypto companies. Because and of SEC. There's been a real estate crisis, <laughs> yeah. yes. So in, in that period of time, we've actually seen a few other regions sort of take the lead in the space, mm -hmm. including Southeast Asia. Yeah. We've seen especially Hong Kong for now, but also mm -hmm. possibly Korea becoming a future leader in the space. Mm -hmm. It depends on regulation, whether the regulation, the regulators will introduce new legislation that supports tokenization and whether sort of they will hopefully realize that a tokenized yeah. share is exactly the same as a normal share. Mm -hmm. It's just a digital version of it yeah. and, and sort of allow organization operators to, 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 mm. to play and operate within the same securities regulation as normal companies, just in a digital form. Mm. Then in Southeast Asia market, do you think Korea is one of the most um, growing or have more potential country compared to the other countries in Southeast Asia? I, th I think so actually, yes. Uh, we see a lot of interest from here and I think there is a potential. Mm. It depends on the regulator, I would say, uh, for yeah. opening up in the space, then I think there is a, a high potential. Mm. Thank you. Um, then could you also share a success story or case study from your experience in the STO sector? Yes, uh, so we have, we have uh, more than 150 clients globally in 40 countries, so yeah. we actually have many uh, quite successful uh, stories mm -hmm. that we can share uh, from our clients. Um, one uh, client in particular is a company called Equito, Spanish company using oh. our platform to tokenize and crowdfund mm -hmm. real estate properties, high quality real estate properties mm -hmm. in Spain facilitating down to 100 euro, similar, almost similar to 100 US dollars wow. investment into these properties, yeah. uh, both in crypto and fiat, and actually being really successful in funding properties in mm -hmm. a very short time. Mm. Um, so that's, How that's uh, what do you mean by a, few, a few days, I few think days. even down to possibly wow. a few hours, right? So it's, mm. it's going quite fast. Um, they are, I think, an example of really taking this uh, uh, to, the, to the retail market, yeah. using modern technology, right? Mm -hmm. So they build an app on top of our backend system and it's a really uh, nice, uh, easy and user-friendly system. Mm, I see. Do you have any clients in Korea market as well? Not, not yet. Not we yet. have a few okay. leads we're working on, but, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not, not yet. All right. Then in terms of market trends, um, are there specific sectors or industry that you believe are particularly well-suited for STO industry? 
Yes, uh, from our perspective, we have chosen to uh, focus on real estate. Real estate. You see, okay. real estate is the biggest biggest asset class sure. in the world, yeah. right? It's 326 trillion mm -hmm. US dollars. It's also almost totally inaccessible for retail investors. Only one percent of real estate is really sort of liquid, tradable, and oh. accessible to invest into, whereas the rest is difficult to access yeah. for investors. And also, the real estate space is plagued by paper-based time-consuming processes, mm -hmm. right? So it's really ripe for disruption. True. But we have also renewables space, solar and wind and so on, that is uh, sort of similar, mm -hmm. just smaller in size. But then we have investment funds and private equity funds, where you could say there's also old-fashioned way that it's managed today and where it's possible to optimize quite a lot. Cool. Then instead of real estate, what other thing that we can think of? in the STL industry, maybe artworks or? Artworks, yeah, so we yeah. see that a little bit, but, but it's not significant compared to real estate. Uh, uh, okay. We have collectibles and uh, sort of uh, beverages mm. and uh, food and so on. But this, this sort of falls into a categor category that we would call company equity or yeah. company crowdfunding, where we have a lot of different uh, sort of uh, use cases it can be used for. Mm. Okay, I see. Then for investors who may be new to this security token industry, um, what key benefits would you emphasize to encourage their participation? I would say uh, from an investor standpoint, uh, the main benefit is that they get access to a lot more investment opportunities that yeah. they would normally get access mm -hmm. to. And they, get, uh, they become able to invest smaller amounts, right? So if you, are, if you don't have 100,000 US dollars to invest, mm -hmm. Now, uh, you couldn't participate in most real estate uh, investment opportunities yeah. uh, in, mm. in the earlier days, but now you can invest maybe down to 100 US dollars or 1,000 US dollars. Mm. So you get a lot more opportunities, right? So you can diversify across a lot of investment opportunities. And then also you can invest with crypto. You can more easily invest globally. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can trade, right? So, mm. so these assets that are invested into in the tokenization space quite often become tradable. Mm -hmm. which is also a quite unique situation. Right? So in the old days, traditional real estate development projects, if you invest, you are stuck for eight or nine years. But here you can actually trade and uh, sort of exit at, at a much earlier mm -hmm. point. Even the exit as well, okay. Then looking ahead, what trends do you anticipate in the estuary industry and how is your company preparing for them? Yeah, so I think the main trend we will see is actually tokenization becoming more of a, a infrastructure for the entire yeah. ecosystem, maybe in four or five years. But before then, I think we have to continue uh, across the hype, uh, hype uh, cycle that we yeah. have been in so far. Right now, it's going down a little bit for, <laughs> for tokenization, but yeah. I think we will still see mm. soon see a rise again because mm. it's almost a no-brainer that it will be successful because we see an increasing amount of retail investors interested in this. And also we see an increasing adoption of the blockchain technology. So it's, it's sort of becoming much easier for companies to tokenize and to, uh, to get benefit from this uh, mm -hmm. situation. Okay, cool. Then what advice can you offer to the other companies looking to embark on a similar journey and enter this SDO industry? Yeah, so you have different actors in the industry, right? But, but I think that just joining the tokenization industry is, is a good career move in general because it's predicted to grow yeah. a lot in the next few years. So getting into the space as a career choice, I think would be a, a wise decision either as a technology mm -hmm. developer or business uh, developer, or mm -hmm. sales, marketing and so on. I think for anyone would be a, a wise decision. And for companies going into the space, pretty much the same, right? There is, there's, it is a blue ocean market, I think. So mm -hmm. we have a few competitors in the space, but, but generally the market is so large that we don't compete that much. Yeah. And that's, uh, it's going to retain that, remain that way, I think, for the next mm -hmm. few years. Cool. Thanks for the yeah. time. Thanks Thank for you. joining us today. Yeah, Thank hope you. to see you in the near future. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.